Hello, this is Bryce Eventhal from Go Engineer, and today I'm going to be covering CircuitWorks from SolidWorks Premium. So, what are the main benefits of CircuitWorks? The main benefit would be understanding the gap between the electrical CAD designer and the mechanical CAD designer. So as your electrical engineer is um, designing that printed circuit board, you can go ahead and understand what's going on in that in the 3D realm. So we're going to import these IDF files and see how that board fits in our product. Maybe we can see where the connection points so we can better model our electrical enclosure to fit our printed circuit board which leads to better products. Later we can run some analysis on our printed circuit board such as FEA or CFD. Um, new of 2014 we can bring over those component thermal properties defined in the electrical CAD software such as the dielectric and conductor density, the specific heat, the conductivity for PCBs, the conductivity for volumetric heat sources from components and then we could that will automatically populate that information in our SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. We can uh, have a nice little printed circuit board maybe we're gonna use this for sales and we could have this before we actually produce the physical printed circuit board. Some other benefits is understanding those bo complex board shapes, make sure those boards fit in our complex model, better fit our enclosures around that board. And as well, uh, both this one's great for our ECAD and MCAD for those keep outs and keep ins areas so that neither of the ECAD or MCAD violate those. So who uses those IDF files? Um, there's uh, quite a few packages, out, electrical packages out there that use um, the IDF files. Um, some major ones are the Altium Designer and Allegro. Um, if you want a complete list, please go to SolarWorks.com and search for CircuitWorks. So there's two workflows that we can work with in CircuitWorks. One would be the ECAD driven and then the other one's the MCAD driven. Today I'm going to be covering the electrical CAD driven so we're gonna be having the uh, IDF file come from our electrical engineer he just got finished modeling it up in his electrical engineering software and now we're gonna import that into SOLIDWORKS and we're gonna export it back out as well but there is another workflow called the MCAD driven and this is where you're designing the board first in SOLIDWORKS um, maybe you wanna put your pl non-plated holes um, your keep out areas keep in areas prior to act the electrical engineer designing that printer and circuit board so it can go both ways so what we're gonna do today um, we're gonna start off at that ECAD driven workflow we're gonna import this IDF file see how these components populate talk about this component library and then we'll see how we go from there and we'll pitch it back to the electrical engineer towards the end so let's flip over to SOLIDWORKS and we're going to turn on our CircuitWorks add-in. It's just another module so we're going to turn it on just like any other module that is built into SOLIDWORKS. And we'll go ahead and open up that IDF file. So there it is. And we get a nice preview of our board before we actually build a 3D model. We can uh, see what's going on. We're going to use some of our preview tools. Maybe we don't want to see these reference designators so we can turn those off. Um, maybe things like plated holes we're not worried about so we can also turn those off. But we're, we're, we're interested in everything so we'll leave it all on. Um, we can also flip to the other side of the board, the bottom side, and uh, zoom in, look at the exact component, make sure that we get the information we need prior to building this 3D model. So let's go ahead and use some of our filters. We have several different filters. The first one we're going to use is the component filter. Um, this we could uh, filter for based upon height. So anything below that value is filtered out and we will not build that in our 3D model. Just make assembly run a little bit faster so we're not having all these little components. But we have several other filters for plated holes, outlines, um, non-plated holes that you could go ahead and try out. So now what we're going to do is let's go look at the components and you'll notice as I select one of these components out of the tree it will highlight it in the graphics area so you see that they're highlighted um, you could also select them individually because those are the um, two instances of the same component and what we could see here is we have a reference designator um, maybe what we want to do you see that B301 we actually want to change that so we'll open up the component properties and we'll change that to let's say uh, T103 our boss calls us and said he didn't like that reference designator so change that real quickly so the next thing you could see on that tr in the tree we have little warning signs and little asterisks next to our component so what I'll 
do is you'll see the warning signs that that is just telling us that there's no height defined in the ECAD software for that component so maybe that's just for future use maybe we want to just highlight that area so we don't design in it um, but in this case I'll go ahead and leave it um, blank because we, we're not going to extrude it usually we can uh, override that and put that a value in there and it'll extrude that outline to that depth so the other little symbol we had was the asterisk um, this little warning sign is just telling me that there's eight zero height components but I'm fine with that so I'll go ahead and build a model anyways but the other uh, symbol we had was the uh, symbol with the asterisk next to it so th what w that is used for is that model isn't in our component library which I'll go ahead and talk about in a little bit um, but as you can see what it's going to do is going to take the outline of that component and just extrude it straight up so we're not going to get a detailed component it's actually just going to be the outline but this is good enough to maybe see if it's going to fit in our electrical enclosure get information like that unless we really need to produce a high quality product then we could go ahead and model that and put it in our component library so as you can see our PCB boards built in the 3D space even annotations from the ECAD software carried over to the SOLIDWORKS module model so you could see that the, we have a keep out area that we need to avoid that transparent red so don't don't uh, put anything in there is what they're telling me and we can turn it around rotate it see what we have um, in 3D space so we could go ahead and go to the CircuitWorks tab and what it's going to be is the same tree we're looking at with all those components inside of it um, let's go ahead and find one of them. I can go ahead and see. I could select this component right here. But what it's going to do, it will highlight it in the graphics area once I find it. And we could see that the chip that I highlighted when we were pr using the preview is now highlighted right there and right there. So what we could do from here as well is we can uh, right click, go to the properties, and we could see the properties of that component from the SOLIDWORKS. So we can uh, always know what our part number is, um, what kind of component, the reference designator, which are qu quite important. And now we'll go back and um, let's say I, I, I'm not too happy with this design the ECAD software, the ECAD engineer gave me. So what I'm going to do is make some changes and give it back to the ECAD engineer. So we'll move that component and we'll go ahead and move this hole as well. So I'm not not too happy where he placed that um, non-plated through hole. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the location I like it where it's stationed on my uh, geometry for my enclosure. And let me get into edit component mode. Got to save this real quickly. So there we go. And uh, now what we'll do after we save this is we'll move that non-plated through hole. Maybe that's where our mounting hole will be on our actual product. So once we move it, we'll export this out back to an IDF file and give it back to the electrical engineer so that he can go ahead and um, adjust to the changes I made, see what I've done. So here we go, move that hole real quickly. There it is. I'm just clicking and dragging, not getting, not being too precise. But uh, once we go through that, we'll zoom back out. And let's go ahead and export this out to through CircuitWorks. So as you can see, CircuitWorks is now um, reading. If you look down there, it's reading all, seeing all the changes, processing all those components. The layers and everything so it's gonna take a couple seconds to, for this to um, get back into CircuitWorks and then from CircuitWorks we could save back out to an IDF file couple more seconds it's quite a few components on this board um, by the way this this board is a, a cell phone board so we can uh, see kinda how this is gonna fit in our cell phone but now what we have is we have the old version and the new version so I can go ahead and compare those and it's going to list the differences between the two boards. So it sees that there's two differences with the holes. I, and then also the component moved. And it even tells me how far it moved on the X, Y, and Z. So now we'll go ahead and save that out. And we have all these different IDF formats that we could save at 3.0, 2.0. We could also save it out to pads. Go ahead and save it there. And now we could go ahead and... Let's give that back to our electrical engineer. Maybe he likes the changes, maybe he doesn't, and we could keep working back and forth until we get our product to be exactly how we want it. 
So the last thing we have to do is talk about the electrical component library. So let's go ahead and open that guy up. And this is what you would build over time as you're uh, importing more and more PCB boards. But as you could see, we have some a nice little component with detail in here. We could see that the uh, ECAD component name and their part number as well. Um, we can also see the most important probably is this ECAD component height. So we could see that Z height. Also, while we're here, um, we could talk about the reference designator prefix, which is designated right here. So we can uh, change this if we wanted to, so that every time I inserted this component into any PCB board, this would be the reference designator it's going to use. So let's go ahead and look at a component with some less information, though. So something like that one. So all it did was it took the component outline and just extruded it based on that Z height. So we didn't have to spend that time modeling um, a crazy complex component. Instead, we just let um, CircuitWorks model this model for us. So we took saved a lot of time that way. But let's go ahead and find something that does have quite a bit of detail in there. There we go. So we can take the time to model out some nice component and when we um, import this component using that um, circuit works again it will use this component if it's called out again and instead of just being that block it will use this fine detail um, for example I'll show you some components in the 3d model real quick as you can see here's that chip I've been um, referring to throughout the whole presentation and then here's some components that we didn't have in our library but it created one just based on that component outline Thank you for listening to this video for CircuitWorks for SolidWorks Premium. This is from Go Engineer. Have a good day.